All right, good morning. Uh, we're running our uh, organizational structure design. Today we're going to the different types of structure we have. We have the top structure, we have the, uh, the flat structure, and the matrix structure. So we're going to start with the top structure. Why do we call it the top, stu top structure? We call it the top structure because it has a small or a smaller span of control, which means we have different managers controlling few numbers of subordinates. Stop right in place. We have different managers controlling few subordinates. That's why it's a top structure. That means in that structure, we have a lot of managers in that organizational structure. So I'm going to read further. Top structures. This implies to an organizational structure with a smaller span of control. And when we talk about span of control, we're talking about the total number of subordinates under a single manager. Here, it means we have two, three, or four subordinates under one manager. That is a small span of control. So what are the benefits of having a smaller span of control? One, managers can have absolute control over control of how resources are being used, which might reduce wastage. So the point about a smaller span of control is that managers can closely watch whatever happens within the organization, and it will allow them to not waste resources. Because if managers are not watchful, resources might be wasted. Do you understand the first point here? That's the benefit. The second one, it allows a clear route to promotion, which may result into star motivation. Based on the point, based on the fact that it is this way, it means if I can do better, if I am here, if I do better, it's possible I, I come into this stage. I could move up the hierarchy based on my performance. So that means there's a clear out to get it to the top. Do we get it or not? What's the difference between this and the wider span? For a wider span of control, you have managers, you have uh, you have one manager with more subordinates. That's why it is the widest span of control. You have more managers. Difference? The difference is that in the, in the widest span of control, you have more subordinates than managers. But in a, in, in a tall, in a short one, you have more managers than subordinates. Do you get it or not? I said, what's the difference between this and this? this the wider span of control and this is. This is a wider span of control, you know? Okay. And this is a short one. So the difference is that here you have few subordinates, here you have many subordinates. That's how that's the wideness. Close it. Do we get it? So the second point is that there's always a clear route towards which you can be promoted. You know that as soon as you do better, you could be up here. If you can do better, you could be up here. That is about it. Is it clear? The third one. Okay, okay. Then the problems about using a tall structure is at one. Management costs are likely to increase. Why is management cost likely to increase? Management cost is likely to increase because you have a lot of managers in the organization. Get the point here. The first problem about using a tall structure is that you, you have a tall hierarchy, which means you have a lot of managers. And when you have a lot of managers, it means you have to pay them more. Managers, are, managers get paid better than subordinates. So when you have, stop that already, please. When you have more managers, it means you have to pay more, and that will increase management cost, which is a cost for the business itself. Because as soon as the cost increases, the profit for the business will reduce. Do you get the first point here? The second one, poor communication as information might be distorted. Because you have a long pole, information might not get, information might be missing or added up. Or like when you have just one, in, one individual passing information across, here you have Information from the senior manager, information from the assistant senior manager, the manager and directors. Everybody has to pass information across. Information might be missing. Or like when you have just one person giving out information or dishing out information. You understand the problem there? So in a tall structure, there's always going to be communication problem. Communication problem, I am management at cost. That is the problem about tall structure. But the benefits are resources are well managed and there's always a clear route towards promotion. Is it clear? So go to the flat structure. Why do we call it a flat structure? We call it a flat structure because it has a wider span of control, which means we have one manager under many subordinates, which is responsible for many subordinates. That is the wider span of control here. One manager under many subordinates. Do we get wider span of control here? So what are the benefits? One, competition is better because the chain of command is shorter. The chain of command is shorter, which means the manager is less remote to the subordinate, it's closer to the subordinate. Do you get what I'm saying here? It's a short, not like this. Look at the manager, 
is, is more remote to the subordinates. But here, the manager is less remote to the subordinates. So the information can be passed across swiftly. So which one? It depends on the organization. And it depends on the objective of the business. And it also depends on how centralized or decentralized the company is. We talked about centralization in the last class. So you have to go through your centralization and decentralization to check which one is beneficial to your organization and based on your objective. Clear? Yes. So what are the advantages of using this? The first one I wrote is communication is better here because the short chain of it's, it, it has a wider span of control and there's managers are less remote subordinates. Two, employees will be motivated because they are less closely controlled. Here, for a short chain of command like this, uh, for a, span, a wider span of control, employees are given more delegation. Do you get the point here? Here, the manager cannot be everywhere. It's difficult for managers, based on what we talked about yesterday on, in, the, in centralization. The first problem about centralization is that centralization might bring about stress to a manager because it's not possible for you to be everywhere. So you need to, dis, uh, you need to delegate. That is why the decentralization comes in. So here, because the manager cannot be everywhere monitoring all this group of people, he will delegate authority. So is this a part of that? No. Decentralization happens mostly here. So that's why I said 